must be learned. And of course, all the organizations today want people who can inform, motivate, or convince people to act. And that is why it takes a lot of significance for us to be here on this platform today. And again, I would like to say here that I am going to only talk in terms of certain perspectives here which have worked for me. I do hope and I do understand that somewhere there could be certain things which could be incorporated by us and in a way make our sessions more fruitful. So now before I start off with the presentation here, I would request all of us to please uh, log on to www.menti.com and the passcode has been mentioned there for a quick poll. I would request all of us to kindly reply to the question which has been asked. The passcode is again 261515. I, okay. Again, it is menti.com and the passcode is 261515. Okay. I can see certain replies on the screen. Thank you so much. I would request uh, all of us to kindly let me know their replies. Wonderful. Right. So I've got uh, three to four responses right now. Wonderful. Audience. Okay. Thank you, I've got seven responses till now. Wonderful, thank you so very much. Um, I hope um, I can now switch over to the presentation here. Now, why I asked that, you know, um, for a quick poll here is because I went researching, okay, so there are many more replies here right now. So I've got audience, I've got bad health, I've got snakes, I've got fear of moving on to stage, Opinion of others. Okay, there are a lot of replies coming in. Thank you so very much. Okay, and okay, somebody said creativity. Okay, that's uh, something to ponder on. Stage fear. Okay, public speaking and lack of it. Okay, thank you so very much for uh, taking this poll. I'm still, uh, you know, looking at the responses here. They're still trickling in. I'm sorry, I'll uh, cut. Okay, right. So I'm sorry, I'll move on to the presentation now. I've got responses as darkness, voice fluctuation, to be left alone, social phobia, stage fear, the many. Okay, thank you so very much. I'll move on to the presentation now. What I intended to do here is that I wanted to find out whether you know the responses that we have received, um, they, they somewhere match with the responses that I could gather. Uh, and again, this is from Wikipedia. So, so um, I thought that I'll share uh, certain fears here. So, so some of the fears that, of course, have been, um, you know, um, sent across, they include sickness, they include deaths. Some of us have written, um, you know, that we want to be more, um, you know, confident. Some of us have mentioned public speaking as a fear. So uh, this... There's point number one here on the slide, which says glossophobia. Now, glossophobia is nothing but the fear of public speaking. So your responses match what I have here, but then uh, a true researcher does not stop here. So I did believe that, you know, I need to go out and find out if there is research which has been conducted with regard to this. So what I found is that... Um, this is what research says. So if I see here, there's a line which says, this study found out that public speaking 
was selected more often as a common fear than any other fear, including death. So we can well imagine that some of us who have re replied and who have uh, been a part of the poll, they have replied as public speaking being their biggest fear. So I completely and thoroughly, uh, you know, agree with you here because there's ample amount of research. Again, there's research about overcoming public speaking anxiety. And this is from the classroom perspective. So um, as I said before, why exactly do we need to talk about this today is because we as trainers, we as teachers, we come across a lot of people who, uh, you know, we have the, the fortune of um, transforming into better individuals. And of course, it's not just for us. It's about our students in the classroom as well. And this very uh, research article that is on the screen here talks about classroom inst instruction and how we can make our students better at public speaking. So it has two angles here now. Now, if I uh, am not wrong here, from here, it, it somewhere uh, clicked in my mind that I needed to find out the types of speakers. Uh, so what I found out is there are four types of speakers avoiders, resistors, acceptors, and seekers. So um, of course the explanation is right there. Uh, the avoider of course does not want to make a presentation and seeker, he or she looks for opportunities to speak in public. So we somewhere have to motivate our students and maybe some of us who have replied, uh, you know, the public speaking part as of the biggest fear, we need to make a transition from somewhere from a, an avoider to a resistor to an acceptor to a seeker. So I'll say we move on from an avoider to a seeker. Uh, again, as I said, presentation skills is a skill which we can learn over time. So again, we are all really good at it and certain uh, you know, points that I'm going to discuss here Hopefully, they can be incorporated in the presentations that you deliver in, uh, you know, uh, the future in your classes. Because right now, we have all, uh, we are rather we are all focusing on um, online teaching. And so, if we talk in terms of the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the content that needs to be delivered, it essentially some sometimes is being delivered by presentation. So it is really important and necessary for us to understand that the essence of the topic does not get lost and what we need to teach uh, because we need an outcome later on is of course uh, there with the students and they are able to you know make the most of it now again when i start off um, this is what comes to my mind why presentations again as i said uh, if if uh, some of us could reply uh, how much percentage would you like to, you know, uh, attach with read? How much percentage do you think when we read something we can, you know, recall? Could, could, could I see some replies, please, in the chat box? Uh, and again, I would uh, request uh, all of us. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am says 30%. Ma'am says 10%. Okay. Wonderful. So there are some replies that I'm getting here. So read. Okay. Wonderful. So uh, Rajvi Kaur ma'am says 25%. Wonderful ma'am. Thank you so much for the reply. Uh, 20%. Okay. Wonderful. Um, can I? Okay. Wow. Okay. So there are a lot of replies which are trickling in. Thank you so much for being so participative. Okay. What uh, a percentage? Okay. 20 to 30%. Okay. That's nice. Okay. Prasenjit Das sir. Thank you so much. 10%. Wow. Okay. So those of us who said 10%, we are really there. And it, it does say 10% when it comes to the reading part. And uh, hearing, if we just hear something, it is 20%. If we see something, it is 30%. And if we hear and see, it is, if we hear and see, it is 50%. And if we say something, it is 70. And of course, the last one, which says 
say and do, which is 90%. And herein comes the focus uh, on presentation skills, on public speaking. So that is why it is really, really important for us whenever we need to give a message, we have to indulge in public speaking. And more so today, as I said before, we are in talking in terms of classes which are online. So when we talk in terms of say and do, it is 90%. Now, um, there's a very nice quote which I often recall, which says, tell me, I forget. Show me, I remember. Involve me, I understand. So again, this helps me to come to my next slide, which talks in terms of the types of presentations. So there are essentially three, which I have covered here. So the one that we indulged in, or we were, were taking, you know, we were delivering were, was more to do with conventional. It is again speaking, we used flip charts, we used handouts, a lot of whiteboard was used. So again, there was not much participation from the student side. Then we moved on to PowerPoint, um, which of course has its own merits and demerits. And the most recent one is multimedia, which includes sound, animation. It includes today, a lot of uh, us have started using hyperlinks so hyperlinks is something which helps us to show many more things in a presentation we don't have to clutter our presentation so we can just click on the hyperlink and we can go online to show a video it could also help us with our research there are many ways so these are essentially the types of presentations that we have today and uh, most of us are already there rather all of us are making use of multimedia these days so from from there, we need to understand that how do we take care of a presentation? So the first part is, of course, getting ready. First up, we need to determine our audience. Why do we need to do that? Because uh, the audience, of course, is, um, you know, the one who's going to get either informed by us or, of course, they are going to be convinced or they are going to be motivated. So, of course, when we talk in terms of the end result, it's the audience for which we are presenting. So now there are four types of audience that we have. Friendly, neutral, uninterested, and hostile. So if we have a friendly audience, we could use humor, but then again, we have to be very careful because humor is a double-edged sword and uh, we do not want to offend anybody. So our humor, we have to keep in check so that we do not offend people around us. And we can share a lot of personal experiences. And the extreme end is the hostile audience. So when we talk in terms of a hostile audience, we have to present a lot of data and expert opinion because they need to be convinced uh, they, they already are resistant to what is being said. So we have to have a lot of data to put a point across and of course substantiate what we are saying. Next is uh, to de decide what needs to be accomplished. When we talk in terms of deciding, uh, if, if let's say for example, we have a topic to inform potential entrepreneurs about three important factors that loan officers consider before granting startup loans. Now here, the main word is inform. And uh, I have written, I've mentioned three points here, um, three sub points, which say convincing information and take away for the audience. Now, if in case we are informing most of the presenters who uh, are efficiency oriented, they would use the direct strategy. Now, what is the direct strategy? Direct strategy is where we share the main idea first up. So we talk in terms of what is the main idea. As I said here, it is about talking or it's, it's about informing potential entrepreneurs about three important factors that a loan officer might consider before granting startup loans. So here we present the main idea first up. But there's where we understand that the audience is not very uh, you know, forthcoming to, or receptive. There we try the indirect strategy. This 
of course, is used by presenters who value uh, or who are, you know, relationship oriented presenters. They they care about how a message will affect their receiver. So if there's a lot of resistance with regard to a particular topic, we, we as presenters can adopt the indirect strategy. And of course, the takeaway for the audience is the prime motive. So uh, again, as I said before, why is it that we are presenting? Is it to inform? Is it to convince? Is it to motivate? And that's where uh, there's a takeaway for the audience. Again, these days we, we have online sessions. So we have to ensure that what is being taught is of course the takeaway for the audience because later on the audience has to interpret it and has to of course sit through a lot of assessments. So that is in a sense the main focus. Now for that as well, we need to somewhere, uh, you know, make a presentation very compact and we need to ensure that when we have the content or the body of the presentation, it's somewhere around 80% and 10% of course is for introduction and 10% is of course for conclusion. Now, how do we organize the content? So we use a three T mechanism, wherein, uh, as I said, in the introduction, we say, and we, we tell them what, is it that we are going to say? What is it that the entire presentation is going to be about? And then the content part of it, we discuss it. We discuss it threadbare. And as I said, it is 80% of the entire presentation. And of course, the last part is conclusion. So what we just let them know, what is it that we informed? That's the last part of it. Now, how do we go about organizing the content? That's the first part. As I said, introduction is 10%, but that is the basis. That's the foundation of our presentation. If we capture the attention of our audience, they're going to stay with us throughout till the end. How do we involve them? So when we involve them, we could use facts. We could use quotes. We could use statistics questions, demonstrations. So of course, demonstrations is going to be from the audience's end. We could always ask the audience to, uh, you know, volunteer and be a part of the demonstration. So that involves them. Questions, of course, more so we, we try and ask the question. We understand that sometimes we might not get the answer, but that's okay. We just give the answer and we move on. These are certain techniques. These are certain initiation techniques so that the audience stays with us and they get involved. Again, uh, second uh, point here is the agenda. It, the agenda, it talks about, uh, you know, the brief presentation outline. What is it that is going to be covered in the entire presentation? And the third thing, uh, or rather the second main point here is uh, we need to identify ourselves and we need to establish our credibility. Now, why exactly do we need to do that? We need to do this because listeners are drawn to people who reveal something of themselves. So either it could be our experience, either it could be our life journey. So where did we start from? Where are we right now in life? So that in a way breaks the ice and makes our uh, you know, audience more comfortable and then we can interact and then we can, you know, present our presentation in a better fashion. Next, of course, when we, we uh, you know, try and assimilate our content, we need to be absolutely sure that there are only two to four principal ideas that we, you know, think deeply about and we put across. Because uh, again, we have to be adequate the content has to be adequate. It does not need to be excessive because as I have mentioned in the bracket there, 20 minutes or fewer, if we can keep it, that's the attention span. Uh, I mean, beyond this, if, if we go on, uh, then of course the audience might not listen or the essence of the presentation somewhere gets lost. So we can always try in terms of two to four principal ideas. And of course, it should not be excessive. The explanation should not be ex excessive. How do we go about organizing it? There are various ways. Now we can either try chronology method. We could do a comparison or a contrast. We could have a journalism pattern. So it depends on us what kind of 
you know, how do we want to organize our presentation? Now, when I talk about chronology, uh, so uh, we all are, uh, you know, um, living in times of Corona. So if, in, if we talk in terms of this, this particular um, disease that, uh, that has afflicted many, so we could start off with the history of this problem from the first sign to the present. Again, if we talk in terms of comparison and contrast, this is again how we can organize a presentation. So for example, our topic could be organic farming and it could also have a versus with modern industrial farming. So here we can try and organize our presentation on the basis of comparison and contrast. Next of course is journalism pattern. So we have five W's and one H. And again, as I said, there are many more ways in which we can organize our presentation. So we could also have a topic or a function or a conventional grouping. So for example, a topic which discusses maybe mishandling of baggage uh, by maybe some airline. Uh, again, geography, space, it could be a presentation or a topic or we can choose which talks about changing diversity of the workforce which could be again organized by regions like you know east west north south so these are various ways uh, and last point which i have here on the presentation is develop an out outline this is uh, you know planning at an advanced stage so we plan for a presentation so we just uh, you don't need to plan, plan, plan. We have to develop an outline. So the outline would suggest how much relevant content is going to go into the body of the presentation. What is relevant? What is not relevant? How much time do I need to give uh, for a particular section? So that helps me in presenting in a better way. So that all comes in developing an outline. Next, uh, how do we build a rapport with our audience? So um, there's a point which says effective imagery. It, it helps us in, in living and enhancing the comprehension. So we can use a lot of personalized statistics. For example, if our topic is about, let's say, employability skills. So we could have a lot of personalized statistics. We could say something like, let's look around the room only three out of and again our, our audience if of course it is undergraduates we could always uh, talk in terms of the research part of it which says only three out of five graduates will find a job immediately after graduation so personalized statistics help examples would help so for example if it's a customer relationship based company and if they want to spruce up if they want to you know ensure that all the representatives they are putting in their 100 percent to get a very good customer experience so the examples could be various so for example we have heard from our clients that our customer service representatives could improve their tone of voice so these could be certain examples uh, again the, se the second sub point which says verbal signposts this helps the audience to recognize that you know i have moved on from one part of the presentation to the next one it it also tells the listener what is coming next so for example we have previewing so in previewing we could say something like the next segment of my talk and again we can fill in the blanks or something as let's consider the causes of so that's one way transitions of course they, they tell the listener that what have we talked about till now and what is it that we'll talk about next. So for example, thus far we have talked about and let's move to. So this tells again the audience, it makes it amply clear to the audience. Summarizing, it, it tells uh, you know in a way what was talked about. So let me review the most significant factors of a particular topic that we are delivering on a particular day. Next, of course, is nonverbal messages. And uh, I uh, just wanted to request all of us again, if uh, you know, I could understand how much percentage do we associate with the spoken word 
how much percentage do we think a spoken word would have and how much do we associate with nonverbal messages could i could i please uh, get some responses from the audience here in terms of percentages how much is nonverbal uh, communication or how much is the percentage there and verbal if i could please see certain responses in the chat box okay thank you so much uh, sobia ma'am wonderful so ma'am says seven percent wonderful could i have some more replies please wow uh dr kk sir says 90 percent non-verbal wonderful sir thank you so much i've got uh verbal as 20 percent from good breath ma'am ashna ma'am says 80 percent wow amazing dimple ma'am says 70 15 percent so okay Dr. Ajay sir says to me, no expression is complete without non-verbal non expressions. Wonderful, so very well said. Wow, okay, so wonderful. So I'm getting in the range of uh, 60 plus, 60% 60 plus here. Okay, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Ajay So 75%, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm cutting uh, you short here. Okay, Jabnu ma'am says 75%, Dr. Anu ma'am says 75%. Thank you so much for being participative. Uh, again, uh, as I said, I would not uh, rest on any, any information which I found on Wikipedia. So what I did again was a little bit of research here. So what I found out is that nonverbal communication, this is a research which was com conducted by Dr. Mehrabian in the 1960s. And he has given a seven 38-55 rule. Now, as um, uh, you know, Dr. K.K. Sharma sir said 90% of the communication is non-verbal and Sovia ma'am said only 7% is verbal. So these are the statistics that we have. Now, 93% comprises 55% facial expressions, posture and gesture and 38% tone of voice. So I can say the same uh, sentence in two ways. I could say please sit down and I could say, please sit down. So there's a difference how I say it. So uh, nonverbal communication is very, very important while we deliver a presentation. So that makes me come to my next point here, which talks about these six, six things under body language and appearance. So it has gestures, posture, movement, eye contact, facial expressions, and dress and grooming. Now, when I talk about gestures, we have uh, to have a very, very open body language. So if we see the gestures here, uh, open palms on the extreme right-hand side, and uh, extreme left-hand side, we have the lady who has her uh, arms really close, not very close, but close to her body. So that again is a sign of open body language and the gestures she's uh, using are appropriate here. If we need to count uh, something, we could always try the picture in the middle. So that's something which would help us. Next, of course, is a quick quiz. Uh, if I could please understand here, if, if all of us could please reply, out of these six images, uh, which one do you think reflects a more open body language. If I could see certain replies, please. Shall be really grateful. Thank you so much, Dr. KK, so. So it says third. So I'm getting third, fifth, and sixth as replies, okay? Wonderful. So all of us are really, really uh, right there. Thank you so much. We all are correct there, thank you. So I'm still getting responses. Thank you, Aishwarya, ma'am. Third, sixth is more of performing, yes. So we are very apt, very true, ma'am. Yes, third and sixth. So yes, of course, sixth is more concert oriented. So yes, thank you so much. Right, thank you so much for your responses. Thank you so much. And um, ideally, uh, as I said, uh, if we have to have an open body language, we need to ensure that we do not go overboard because if we use a lot of gestures, what happens is uh, what we are speaking somewhere, it gets lost. 
people start looking at our hand movements and uh, if it we, we do not want to end up in a lot of hand movement because as i said the entire um, you know message the entire purpose of our presentation gets defeated thank you so much for your replies there this is the posture so again uh, you know chin parallel to the floor shoulders aligned this is again good posture the one in the middle of course is good posture and again uh, we come to the next one which says eye contact and movement so uh, why eye contact is is really really important here is of course because all of us when we present we do understand that the audience will take us more uh, you know in a way we will sound more credible they would also associate our confidence with the, the eye contact or the lack of it so one that it ensures that you know the audience has this motion you could say that they, the speaker is more confident if you maintain an eye contact and also it helps me understand not just my facial expressions are important the audience's facial expressions are also important we understand from theirs that how much is it that they have understood and we can you know go ahead and make our presentation or try and tweak our presentation a little bit so that if somebody has not understood we could make it a little simpler so that we could understand if everybody has now understood so one of course is confidence second of course is i get to know how many of us are able to understand what the message uh, you know conveyed whether it has been understood or not so we need to make eye contact with as many as people possible and of course when we, when i talk about movement as i said before for gestures there should not be a too much of movement because if there's too much of movement people will get intimidated so we again on the extreme end we have some people who would not like to move out of uh, their comfort zone or from behind the lectern so we need to ensure that we do leave the lectern area we move a little bit toward our audience again we have to be very mindful of the fact that we do not have to intimidate them uh, and of course we can move toward our audience a little bit especially at the beginning and the end of our talk so that sets the tone for the entire presentation these are certain facial expressions that the presenter could have but then again the top left hand and the bottom left hand expression i i do understand that we should not have that kind of an expression on our face so the lady is projecting the right facial expression we should have uh, a very pleasant smile on our face and we should deliver a presentation with a smile on our face because it keeps the audience also upbeat and whatever the message that is being con conveyed people are more receptive people would uh, understand that better as against somebody who's grumpy who's uh, dejected those are the images that we have on the left hand side of the screen so when we come to dress and grooming uh, i would not say the less said the better but these pictures explain it all of course uh, dress and grooming plays a very vital part again is it establishes credibility it tells the audience that we are really serious about what we are going to speak about the entire uh, in the entire session so of course our grooming has to be impeccable the dress part has to be impeccable now we move on lastly to closing the presentation so we have to ensure that we have to give a verbal signpost as i mentioned in my presentation earlier that we have to have a, a verbal signpost letting the audience know that we are concluding now so we could try to conclude i would like to say or to summarize there were three points that we discussed or something like the third one i have presented three main points and they are and of course in the conclusion as i just said we need to recap the key points so for example in today's presentation we talked about the types of speaker how do we organize the entire presentation and uh, 
how exactly does nonverbal communication help? And then we moved on to uh, closing the presentation. And we could also have a summary slide if we want. We could always have a summary slide which has the key points again. And last but not the least, we could invite questions from the audience. So that really helps us to understand how much the audience knows and if there's something that uh, you know they're confused about or if there's something more that they would like to ask because again as i said early on our whole motive is to inform is to convince is to motivate the audience that we have so without inviting questions we might not understand it last but not the least there are certain tips for reducing anxiety before presentation so breathing is one so we need to be um, you know uh, at peace with ourselves before we go and present any presentation we need to breathe properly so that anxiety is taken care of and again as i said in the research it was mentioned that anxiety is a major cause of um, you know students not coming up and presenting visualizing it of course helps us a lot then organizing so there are various ways in which we could organize again and how do we want to present uh, presentation so we could get into you know may, majorly there are four extemporaneous which includes note cards so we could have note cards which have some points written on it so that we do not have to look back at the presentation and uh, there's eye contact which is maintained with the um, audience uh, extemporaneous is the best one there are three more one is scripted uh, the next one is memorized and the last one is impromptu the only thing with impromptu is that we could you know uh, go ahead and talk about many things and the one main thing that we wanted to talk about might get lost somewhere in uh, you know the, the entire impromptu presentation style so as i said extemporaneous helps and last is uh, practice practice and practice so they say practice makes a man perfect um, even a woman perfect for that matter and uh, that brings me to uh, the end of the presentation here thank you so very much for your time and uh, if there are any questions from your side or if there's something that you would like to ask thank you so much uh, vishal so thank you so much means a lot thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you sovya ma'am means a lot thank you ma'am Thank you so much, Sandeep sir. Thank you, Aishwarya ma'am. Thank you, Ajay sir, Parul ma'am, Dimple ma'am, Dr. K.K. sir, thank you so. Kake sir, thank you so much. I'm sorry, if I skip any names, I'm really sorry. Tajindra ma'am, thank you. Geeta ma'am, thank you. Dr. Ambud sir, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you so very much. Thank you.